Why don't you open up with me to page 166? And I'm going to transition over to my nice, newly refilled pen. Oh, close, very close. Almost got there? 166. 166. Now, you might recognize this is chapter 6, which we started this year with. If you've got your finger on page 166, just flick back a little bit, and you might recognize some of the stuff that's there. Um, algebraic fractions, okay. factorizing, expanding. If you don't recognize it, um, then you ought to revise that because those skills are what we're going to be building on for the rest of this topic. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at... Let's do one like 1C. One okay. One C. Write it down with me. Start with the question. It's always handy to write down what the question is just so you make sure you get everything correct. It says G plus 9.3 equals 12.2. I think, I think those are the numbers. Okay. All right, so we're always after some kind of operation we can do to both sides to get us closer towards the solution, the value of the unknown, all those kinds of things. So a good suggestion is to subtract 9.3 from both sides. Okay. Um, you might have also heard this. Sometimes um, teachers will explain it with the language of taking that 9.3 and taking it over to the other side. And when it crosses the equal sign, it's a positive over here, it becomes a negative over there. Whichever way fits the way that you think, um, that's fine. I like to say, subtract 9.3 from both sides. <laughs> now, this line I'm just writing right now isn't really necessary. You can go straight there, but I'm including it here for you so you know exactly what I'm doing. So it's not like black magic, where did the next line come from, okay? <laughs> The 9.3 is cancel. 12.2 minus 9.3 is, I think it's 2.9. Great confidence. And of course, you can check on your calculator. Right? All right, now, that's really easy. All you had to do, really, to both sides was one thing. A subtraction, same here. All you had to do was one thing, a division. Okay. Now, before, we didn't really need to include that step to be able to get to the right answer, okay? But here, you're gonna have to do more than one thing, okay? Um, sometimes, some textbooks will call this one-step equations, and these ones are called two-step equations because you need more steps. Let's see what we can do. You've got a five and a six, and I wanna get rid of both of them so that I just have A on its own, okay? Which one do you think I should try and get rid of first? Yeah. Five. Okay, now, how would we get rid of the five? Okay, how would we get rid of it? It's, it's five times too big. I've got five it's times a, times. right? So I could, if I'm multiplying five times a, divide. I should divide. Dividing is the opposite, isn't it? Now, let's just see what happens. Remember, if I divide something, I've got to divide everything. Yeah. Right? All right, we'll do this one. So I'm going to get 5a on 5. Right? But there's a 6 there I've also got to divide. Right? 6 over 5. And then there's a 26, and I've got to divide that by 5 as well. Okay? Because both sides are equal, I've got to do the same operation to both sides, otherwise it's not an equation anymore. Uh, sorry, I take that back. It'll become a different equation if I do one thing to one side, not the other. Is this, okay, is this gonna work? Um, five A over five, that's just A, right? Now what do I do? Plus six over five, 26. Bless you. I want the A on its own, right? Th this, this line here, I know it's got weird fractions in it, but it looks very much like this line. You've got what you want plus something else. That's what we want plus something else. So what should I do to both sides? Minus. I should, yeah, I should subtract, right? So I'll subtract that 6 over 5. If I do it to one side, I better do it to both. Okay. So on this side, those 6 over 5 is going to cancel. You just get A. What's going to happen over here? 26 over 5 minus 6 over 5. Denominator is the same. 20 over 5. That's good. It'll be 20 over 5. And 20 divided by 5 is just 4. It's 4 over 1. Okay, now that's, that's correct. Now, by the way, before we move off this, I want to draw your attention to the fact that this here is the solution, right? So when they say determine the solution of the equation, this is it. A equals 4. You can nonce the solution because you can take it back to the first line. 
And like I said, like a key, it should unlock it and make it work. Watch. If A is 4, what happens to this um, left-hand side? What's it going to be equal to? Well, it'll be 5 times 4 plus 6. That's 20 plus 6. Sure enough, it's 26. So that's how you can know that you're right. Okay. Now, that way is fine. But, yeah. Had I know that I was right? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. You take your final line. This is what we call the solution, right? This is what you were trying to determine. <coughs> you take your solution and you put it back in the original line you got. That's, that's what this line is about, okay? Um, you substitute it in. So wherever you see A, instead you stick a four. That's how you get it. Did someone ask something? Uh, yeah, couldn't you just, like, this is how I would do it. This is probably the wrong way to Can I pause you before you do that? Because yeah. I'm about to show you another way to do it and maybe oh, we can walk through okay. it together. Okay. What was your question? Oh, another way to do it. Okay, all right. Now, the question is, why would we want another way to do it? Um, I suppose the, uh, the reason why I would want to do it is because I just want to avoid fractions where I can. Okay, you can't always avoid them. Sometimes you're always going to get weirdo looking numbers, but sometimes you can. Let's start with this first line again. So here's a different way to do it, but we are going to end up on the same answer. Okay, before we divided by five, that was what we started with. But what else could we do as a first step? Was this... What you want to suggest? Uh, uh, like, you were going to do something else? I was doing like, five, you know how it's 5 but you have to do 5 times something? So it's like, you just figure out what, so it's like 5, well five times, um, yeah, okay. what would be 20 and plus 6 is 26. Yeah, good. So you're, you're actually, what you're doing is sort of directly going at that with a sort of guess and check type approach, yeah. okay? Which, which works. You'll get the right answer. However, the caution with that is, it kind of only works here because the numbers are nice. Like, it's I can see what this is going to be equal to, right? Whereas, if the numbers were a bit more disgusting and harder to work with, have a look at some of the later exercises, guess and check becomes more and more difficult. Okay. And that's why going through these steps are a more reliable method. Right. We'll get you the right answer, though. Were you going to just suggest something else? I was going to do, like, minus 6 from 26 and then divide it by 5. Well, let's try this, okay? So, let me repeat in case you didn't hear. First, here we divided by 5. That's what we did. Divide by 5. That's what made this line. But this time we'll try a different thing. We're going to subtract 6 again from one side and the other. So over this side you get 5a plus 6 minus 6 and 26 minus 6. I've subtracted from both sides. What happens to the 6s? They disappear. 26 minus 6 is just 20. Now you've got the 5 to get rid of, right? But we can do that the way we did it before by... Dividing, right? So I'm going to divide that by 5, divide that by 5. Four. Over this side it cancels and we get the same answer. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I do like this second way a bit better. You can even see on the board it's shorter, yeah. Okay. Uh, partly because it avoids some of the fractions. Like I said, you can't always, but have a look. Being that you've got these two equal ways, like they both get the same answer. Okay. Try and think about which one's quicker. All right. You're okay. 